Sometimes, if not most of the time, premium Bandai doesn't feel so premium. It just feels like a little bit of a ripoff. Color variants, all of the master grades, slightly variant kits from what we would have seen before, and they're all made to order, usually only available in Asia and Japan. That means usually you're going through some kind of second or tertiary seller in order to grab them, bumping up the price. But every now and then, Premium Bandai actually releases premium kits. These are made for the ground up for Premium Bandai, like some kits we would have seen before, including the Master Grade Gundam F90, as well as the Wing G unit kits. This is a new one to the lineup right here. This is the high grade G line standard armor from the PlayStation 3 game Mobile Suit Gundam Battlefield Record UC0081. This is essentially three kits in one. First off, we've got the G line itself, an absolutely fantastic looking gym style suit with some crazy design and an absolutely intense build. On top of that, then we've got the accessories, which is an absolutely ridiculous spread, which upgrades it to the G line standard armor and even further beyond to the G line standard armor Gatling Smasher. Articulation wise, this is one of the most fun kits I've ever had the pleasure to pose with some real smooth figure like aspects to its build and its articulation. And of course, in the usual premium Bandai sort of way, there's multiple variants of this particular G line probably coming in subsequent releases. And all I can say is, I cannot wait. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review. And today I'm taking a look at this right here, the high grade G line standard armor. And this is from that PlayStation 3 game, which I don't remember off the top of my head because I don't have it right now in front of me. So that's what it looked like, that one right there. And as you can tell from that, Monochromatic blue box. This is a premium Bandai exclusive and this is one hell of an exclusive This is way better than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be fairly standard. It is nothing Standard whatsoever. So if you're looking for one of your own you can't find it anywhere You can find it where I got mine and that's true. Bye. Link is down there in the description. Now. Let's check this out Before we jump directly into taking a look at the kit itself Let's wind back a little bit towards the build now This comes in a fairly hefty size high-grade box a medium size one and I didn't know what I was getting into at all when I was going to build this kit. As far as I had known, it was just another kind of gym style kit, which it is, but at the same time, it is not. Like I mentioned, I knew nothing about this whatsoever. So this is from the PS3 game, Mobile Suit Gundam Battlefield Record UC0081, which has a really cool opening. It's really nicely animated. However, sadly, it doesn't feature the G line whatsoever, but still very, very nice. It's a lot of the Alboa Q battle from the end of the original Gundam. But as for the G-Line right here, where does it actually fall into the whole Gundam One Year War and Beyond timeline? Well, this is from 0081, like it suggests on the box. It's essentially a gym, but it's not a mass-produced one, so it has specs similar, if not equal to, that of the Oryx 782 Gundam itself. Now, getting to the actual kit, there's a whole ton of plastic in here, and this, like we've seen with Premium Bandai before is more or less kind of like the Master Grade Gundam F90, the Advance of Zeta kits, or the Gundam Wing G unit kits. As in, there are multiple forms to the G line. There's this one right here, which is the nude version. We've got the standard armor we'll be taking a look at later. And there's also two more variants, which is the assault armor and the light armor. This kit itself has three different builds, something I didn't know about, otherwise I might've wanted three separate kits. And at its core, this is premium Bandai at its finest. They've pulled out all the stops, definitely. This builds up in a kind of classic Gundam way. There are no polycaps, it is plastic on plastic. There is no full inner frame, but it is very nicely designed. The parts layer up very perfectly. Inside the leg, there's a nice sliding gimmick to give us some extra articulation, and the articulation is off the charts. Everything builds up nicely from the legs to the waist unit. Sadly, we don't have a color separated V in there, which is a little bit of a back step. And one of the most interesting aspects of this build is just how many parts layer up on each other. Instead of having one big core section of front and back for the body, we've got an upper section that the arm parts connect into, the white section slides in from underneath, and the armor builds up in piece by piece by piece by piece, which gives a nice look in the end with very nice color accuracy. The arms are fairly similar to a standard high grade build with some nice smart little aspects built in, like a little bit of a forearm swivel. The armor builds up nicely onto it, very nicely color separated once again, we've got some unique shoulders, and when it comes to the head, this is one of the nicest high grade gym-esque heads I have ever seen. There is a sticker for use inside of it, I did not use it, I just panel lined it and paint the eyes instead, but it layers up with a lot of nice layers. 
This is a kit that does have some stickers inside the box. Like I mentioned, the only real ones that are for on the actual unit itself are the eyes, the head camera, and the crotch V. But besides that, the rest of the suit becomes, or should I say goes, relatively unscathed. It's more the standard armor that needs some stickers and lacks some color accuracy. At this point, you're about halfway through the build and that's where I'm gonna stop. We're gonna take a look at the G line itself and we'll build and talk about the armor a little bit later on. So jumping now right on into the aesthetics and first off we're going to be taking a look at the Oryx 81 G line itself without any of the armor on. Now like I mentioned already I did not really know what to expect when building this kit but man was I thoroughly thoroughly impressed. Right now we're living in definitely a bit of a high grade golden age where Bandai really is pushing the boundary both visually and engineering wise when it does come to high grade kits. The G-Line right here is a very nice crisp design with absolutely fantastic color separation. It's that traditional kind of Federation style, but it's definitely been given a lot more detail, probably to match with the graphics at the time on the PS3. However, compared to the in-game models, this looks even better. This is through and through a Kotoki design, which it is. And although there is a couple of things that stand out to me a little bit as not so awesome as the rest of it, it is insanely awesome. And instead of putting off what those are, it's the feet are a little bit on the flat side and don't really move. So they kind of bring the whole design down a little bit. And the other is the lack of a V color separated in the crotch right there. But besides that, this is incredible. Let's get in a little bit closer. So jumping in now to take a look at some of the details a little bit closer. There's some really nice aspects about this. For example, like the actual color separated Vulcans in the sides of the head. Like I mentioned, I did paint the eyes inside of it and just panel lined what was in there. I thought it would be a bit of a waste to throw a sticker on that nice detail. I do have some of that dark navy blue in underneath the top there. So that is some nice level of detail. We've got some venting in the chest. The color separation in the chest is phenomenal. All these tiny little parts that build up. We have a choice of two different backpacks. I will mention that. This I just picked because it had more thrusters on it. The arms are separated up very, very nicely. This is some of the most unique shoulders I've ever seen. That part on top does not move with the arms. Probably something to do with the armor we'll see later. Sadly, that V in the crotch there is not color separated. That's just in red. There is an included sticker. Nice detail around back. The sides of the legs look good too. And it is worth knowing that this is something that will layer up with armor over it later. So this is just an option. This is what is inside of it. Again, the feet a little bit disappointed that you're... They're just, well, big blocks, but on the whole, not too bad. This is the point in the review I'd put it side by side with the actual art, but as you can see, the line arts that are on the wiki are just the actual line arts themselves, so I'll hold on to that till later when the armor is attached on. When it comes to those individual aspects like the nubs and the seams and whatnot, this has been very, very nicely designed. I thought I saw a few nubs kind of appearing here and there when I was building it up, but there's not that much present at all. There's a couple on the little clips up on the shoulders, but besides that, not much. Some parts in the gray sections, they're towards the back, but not really much at all. Same with seam lines, this has been very, very nicely designed. And the only real mold line I'm seeing is that one up on the thigh right there, but otherwise, looking pretty good. Next up, that full 360 spin, and there's not really much else to say that I haven't said already. This does look extremely good, but what you can't really see in a video is it actually feels good too. It's nice and heavy considering its small size, it's strong, the joints are extremely good, and overall this just looks nice. The cockpit hatch, the various parts of the chest armor, the way they're color separated out, everything looks great. Again, this is an out-of-box build, there is no panel lining done whatsoever, but there is some nice aspects on the legs. There are some little dots here and there, but for the most part it's quite accurate to what it should look like, and not too much extra added for the model kit. Moving into his size comparison now, and there it is side by side with the Oryx 78 II. Now, in universe, this has a head height of 19.2 meters, making it a bigger unit than the standard Oryx 78 itself. So it's a big enough little high grade. As for being beside another couple of high grade Gundams, there's the high grade Exia, high grade Barbatos, high grade. Every time! High grade G Self, high grade Freedom Gundam Revive, high grade Rising Freedom, and the high grade Gundam Aerial Rebuild. So Premium Bandai doesn't always put the premium in Premium Bandai, but when that P is in P Bandai, this right here is what you get. What a loadout. We've got three forms in here, the first we've already seen, the second one we get with all of this armor right here, which is the standard armor. Definitely given a bit of Jewel Gundam from Seed vibes. Next up we've got this piece right here, which is for the third form, being the G-Line Standard Armor Gatling Smasher. 
So on top of all of that, you've got an alternate backpack. So that's two backpacks you can use with this kit. And when it comes to the equipment, so we've got a pair of beam sabers, one hell of a beam rifle, a shield, and when it comes to optional parts, we've got the lesser spotted widespread left hand, which is incredible. Overall, you get so, so much inside this box, so many options. It's one of those ones you want to buy two or three of. So moving through everything now, and first up, we've got beam sabers. These are pretty standard. There are the handles. They have little trigger bits on them. Getting these attached in the hands is super simple. It's usual just popping them into the standard holding hands like so. This works both ways, standard grip and reverse grip, and getting this thing into a pose is an absolute joy. It's got such fluid, nice articulation that just works the way you want it to. There it is in a little bit of a pose post with both of these beam sabers and this thing is dynamic and pretty awesome. When these are not in use they attach in that usual kind of Oryx 782 classic way where they pop up onto either side of the backpack just like so. These are the exact same attachments for both backpacks so both are the same. Next up in here we've got the beam rifle and this is quite the beam rifle. I haven't seen a big chunky beam rifle that I love this much since the Jester Cannon. This is incredibly cool. This does build up out of a whole bunch of parts. Three parts to the main weapon, the underslung section as well as two parts including color separated sight for the sight segment. And what we get in the end just looks so, so good. I love this beam rifle. Of course the hand doesn't come permanently attached like that. It's just the only thing that the hand is for is for this beam rifle. So just left it on there for the sake of it. Attaching it is the usual ball joint hand thing. You just pop off the hand like so and pop off the one with the beam rifle attached to it like that. And what a beam rifle. This is so cool. It really goes with the nice layered design of the mobile suit itself. This thing is big and really cool. Definitely digging this, especially all the nice layered detail. That's cool. We're getting these so infrequently, I almost forgot to mention it, but we do have a widespread dynamic left hand in here as well, which is always nice. Definitely enhances poses when it is holding on to just one weapon. Swapping is the usual pop off hand, pop on hand, and that right there is what it looks like. Next up in here, we have a shield. It's nice, a definite unique take on the classic Gundam shield. The gray is very nice. I was going to say the designers did a great job on these, but I forgot it's Hajime Katoki. Of course, it looks great. We've got color separated yellow that light gray, the white this section is removable so we might see other kits with a different end I'm wondering and there's the rear of the shield, it would have been nice if this was in gray but that is easy to spray and we do have an interesting little peg right here, it's just a ball joint and attaches into the elbow into this nice square little slot like so which just works out simple and effective, that is one nice shield right there. We do have two types of backpack in here, we've seen this one the whole time, that's the one with the three thrusters in a line just like so. What's different between this and the other is this just pops off like that. There is the standard backpack adapter so you can use this with whatever you want and there is the other backpack. So this is just two standard little thrusters. You can pop the beam saber sections up in there if you want to but, but nothing. I might as well just stick them up in there. This is extremely simple to just pop on into those little square slots like so. Hold on perfectly actually. This has been absolutely amazingly designed. So everything just works out nicely. So there's more of a standard gym looking backpack. So there we go. That is the G line itself with its full loadout, which is that big chunky beam rifle, incredibly nice shield and gray and two beam sabers. This would have been a nice enough kit on its own if they just released it like this. They released the extra parts later on, but we do also get the armor in here as well. So that's what we're going to be checking out next. The standard armor. So next up, it's time to take a look at the standard armor and standard is kind of an odd word to use. This has more of a full armor or a jewel Gundam assault shroud kind of feel. Now, when it comes to the build of all of these parts, they're quite simple. There's two or three parts per every piece. Some parts are just plain old plates, but they all work out quite well. The color is extremely, extremely blue. And between this and the backpack for that Gatling mode, you've almost got nearly a full half a build still left to this. Anyway, it builds up easy. Now let's get it attached. So getting the standard armor on is super, super simple, but has a massive effect on the overall aesthetics of this particular kit right here. In order to get this set up, I guess the most complex aspect is you do have to remove two little panels from the chest like so. They just slide out like so. They wear gray and you pop in some blue that will match the armor. The shoulder armor is the only armor with a bit of a moving part. That is the outer aspects can move up and down ever so slightly. And these just slot down into the shoulders via a peg. Very simple and they do move with the articulation we have up on the shoulder rack. 
Moving down to the legs, and we've got two armor panels that attach on either side of the leg. These are perfectly molded, so they will even hold in place even when one is just attached. Then we've got a front and back panel for attaching onto them, which locks these in place. The rear panel has some nice thrusters in it. The same on the other side, so there's a total of five of these panels that make up the leg armor. And if you're wondering what the fifth one is, it's this one that pops onto the little pegs on the sides just like so has thrusters and has a little bit of rotation in it. Now, one of the nicest designs aspect of this is the ankle armor. This actually just kind of attaches up underneath the front of the shin armor. I thought this would be really awkward. It seemed like such an awkward concept, but it clicks in so easy, so perfectly and moves perfectly. This is, again, expertly, perfectly designed. Last up then, we do have some skirting armor. The front skirting armor attaches to the underside of the skirting armors. Now these I will mention I did snip apart on the runner, but you might want to keep these attached for this particular kit because they do support this flap here, but I haven't had any issues thus far. We have a rear flap which attaches on, made out of two parts, so it does have a little bit of butt flap movement up and down. And finally, we've got a very interesting design to the attaching side skirt armors. They just attach onto these long little gray segments which were underneath, and this holds on surprisingly well. Overall, the armor does attach on very, very nicely, changes the overall look quite a bit, but at the same time doesn't look like armor's been put onto it. This definitely is premium, premium Bandai right here. It looks great. So jump now into that full 360 degree spin of the G-Line with the standard armor equipped. This has added a whole lot more color in that light blue, as well as some same colors we would have seen on the mobile suit itself, including the yellow and that nice dark navy blue. Overall, it's thickened up quite a bit. We've got some heavy armor around the knees, as well as the waist unit, up in the shoulder, and some new armor panels in the chest. Overall, this does look incredible, and changes it quite a bit from what we would have seen already. Now, this isn't as color accurate as the standard G-Line without the armor, which I'll talk about in a second. I will throw the weapons on this too, so you can see what it looks like pretty much fully equipped before we go all the way to phase three with this. Overall though, it's really hard to decide which looks better, the standard version or the armored version, but personally, I always love a nice, lightly armored, standard gym-esque suit. So anyway, back to that little sticker sheet. So there are some stickers that use these big circle ones right here. Now these were used on these little circular aspects in here. These are on the outside too. So you wouldn't really notice these too much. You do lose a little bit of panel line because of it, but they're not the worst, definitely. Next up, we've got these ones right here. I didn't use these because they're kind of those ones where you know those little cuts in them. So they go around an angle, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. And overall, I didn't think they'd make that big of a difference. Those are for on this little segment right here, this tiny little thruster. These, once again, are on both sides. Now, this isn't the only thing that is color inaccurate about this kit. And popping it beside the line art, and you'll see that all of those little circular parts, these little parts here, here, down here as well, these are all meant to be in yellow, but they are not. Easy enough to actually just kind of fine line or yellow these with some fine line Gundam markers, the paint ones, of course, and uh, you should be able to do that, but they are not in color. Would have been nice to see some little yellow parts poking through and also down on the thrusters here. Whoa, no, they are color accurate. It's just you need to add a little bit of black shading inside of it, but otherwise they're perfect. It's just those little circles, not the worst. Not the worst at all. And of course, this isn't even its final form. We also have this backpack extender ride here, which is extremely, extremely nice. Now, jumping back in time a little bit, uh, this builds up very, very nicely, especially the Gatlings. I use the term loosely because these look more like they shoot missiles as opposed to bullets, but the Gatlings have a lot of nice parts to them. The little frame that attaches them on, the color separated little missiles inside of it, it all works out really nicely. We have a backpack extendy part which will attach this onto the existing backpack and we have a couple of fuel tanks as well which remind me of the go is it five and six or is it four and five or is it three and four uh but the red one of those they're very simple do what they need to do but they do look great so in order to get the g-line fully equipped it's quite simple first off you pop off these little side bits which were holding on the beam sabers like so which allows the backpack cover to just attach on over the backpack simple as that right there. It's just a peg into a hole and holds on extremely, extremely well. Now you might be a little bit disappointed that you lost those beam sabers, but we do have this little white section right here and underline that butt because this attaches onto the butt with the beam sabers attached into it. So you still have those beam sabers as well as those big old shoulder gatlings. 
But anyway, there it is finally fully loaded up with the Gatling Smash. And again, I'm super confused by this. It says it's a Gatling. And over on the wiki, it does say there's three different types of armaments that can go up here. A Gatling, a missile launcher, and an auto cannon. But as again, it looks like, is it a Gatling missile launcher? Like, does it just start like Gatling rotating fire missiles everywhere? Because if that's the case, that is pretty cool. Overall, though, this has become one heavily armored, awesome gym style battle suit. I love this to bits. It looks incredible. That's it for the accessories. On to the articulation. So finally now moving on to the articulation. This is a rock solid polycap list build. So it's just plastic on plastic in the usual way kits are nowadays. This is a very atypical build as well. This is some stuff that you don't normally see. For example, we've got a dropping mechanism in the knee, which enhances the knee bend, especially when you've got the armor on. The app crunch is extremely expressive and nice, but at the same time quite strong. And everything is just nice. It's even got mild rotation inside the forearms. So you actually full rotation inside the forearms in a nice kind of way. So everything is just so perfectly expressive. I'm actually going to take these off just to make things easier. And anyway, get into the usual pose. Okay, I will admit, I am shocked. I legit thought it would do better than this. This is not, well, as good as I thought it would be. There's so much going on in the actual build and all the articulation and the nice bits here and there that I thought this would get lower, deeper, and more dynamic. I guess I'm a little bit spoiled by what we're seeing with the new high-grade seed kits. Now, this is very interesting because you can really see where premium Bandai and standard Bandai spirits have diverged here in what they find important in articulation. Even the engineering is entirely different. So you end up with two completely feeling, or should I say different feeling beasts from both parties. You can tell an entirely different team or sets of teams worked on this than on what we're seeing with regular Bandai spirits being the Witch from Mercury releases as well as the Gundam Seed Freedom releases. This just feels like an entirely different beast and it's got different priorities and it seems like, I don't know, it's just we've got some limitations in some parts I didn't expect it to have. Let's check everything out. At the neck here we've got the standard giggity 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 goo. So that means you can move the head back and forward. There's it looking all the way up. Nice. All the way down. Very good. Side to side and it can go all the way around. The shoulder joint here is very classic. This is essentially just like a polycap made into plastic. And you'd almost say that about all of its joints. It's not the same with Gundam Seed Freedom. They use entirely brand new style joints with a kind of ball joint on the end. What we get from that is just in and out at the shoulder. We do not have really any kind of shoulder roll per se. We do a little bit in there. There is the full 360 degree spin. There is the arm all the way up. So somewhat blocked and all the way down. We do have this little part that moves up and down. This is for attaching the shoulder armor on. Full 360 spin here. We've got a second one right here, which is very, very nice. There is the double bend at the elbow. Very good. And a standard ball joint wrist. The ab crunch in here is an incredibly smooth, nice design. There it is all the way to the back, all the way forward. There is the side to side pivot, which isn't too bad at all. And we do have the full spin here as well. So this is one of the most expressive joints on the kit. Regular ball and socket right there. The front skirting armor can move up and down. It's kind of hard because these are tiny. And when the other skirtings are attached, they can move as well as including the butt flap, which we don't have right now. We do have a little bit of a forward and back rocking mechanism for moving the legs. So that is just one of these classic majiggers right here. Kick-wise, what we get is that up to the front. I thought it'd be more considering how lacking in armor it is. There it is out to the back. And as for the splits, it's the full splits. Full 360 spin at the upper leg. We've got a double jointed bend at the knee. This can pull out to get you a little bit more, especially when the armor is on there. And down at the ankle, it can move inside there like so. And we've got a pivot right here, which is extremely similar to the Gel Goog Menace. So I kind of take back that they seem to be made completely different because this is extremely similar to the Gel Goog Menace. The foot doesn't do anything but actually just ball joint like so. And when it's on the ground, you got back, forward, side, to side. So not bad. Overall on the whole right there, once again, is that full pose out of it and it didn't do exactly as much as I thought it would but it is an absolute joy to pose. It's a nice kit with a good center of balance and always fun to pose. So anyway that right there is it for the review and I shit you not and I kind of hesitate to say this but once again this kit right here is platinum tier. 
Now, this is a little bit of a combination of the fact that I don't review as many kits as I used to, so I tend to pick the ones that look really, really good. Hence, they end up being really, really good. That and Bandai has gone all out, really, when it comes to high-grade kits recently. They're all ridiculously so much better than they ever were before. Like, I tried to fit this into gold tier to see if I could, or maybe beyond that, but no, it just is platinum tier. Visually, it's absolutely fantastic, and it's only let down ever so slightly by some tiny color inaccuracies. It's almost absolutely perfect. It looks fantastic. It's four out of five, platinum tier. When it comes to the accessories in here, you get such a spread, just for like what you have for the robot itself with the shield, ridiculously cool, nicely designed beam rifle and standard beam sabers, and then you've got all of the optional armor as well. Bandai could have split this into two kits, but they did not, making this almost perfection. The only thing wrong with the accessories, once again, is a little bit of some color inaccuracies. Four out of five, platinum tier. And when it does come to the articulation and design and engineering on this, we've never seen a gym like this before. It's just so perfect. The articulation is extremely, extremely good with some nice gimmicks and some nice fluid motion. This may not have as much articulation as some of the freedom kits we would have seen recently, but it is more fun to pose with the articulation it has. It just feels so fluid and almost like a figure. It's pretty much perfect. I would almost give it, for articulation, 5 out of 5. The only thing I'd knock it for is the feet a little bit, but... Well, platinum tier. So what can I say? This is an absolutely fantastic kit right here. If you like the gym style kits, then the high grade G line is for you. Especially if you like kits, you can take parts off of, put parts onto. It's got that dual Gundam or full armor kind of feel to it. This is so unique. I highly, highly recommend this kit right here. It's one of the most fun I've had with a kit in a long... And I've had fun with all of them. They're great. What can I say? It's awesome. If you want, I got mine to buy. Link in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to, make sure to come back for more Goblin Blood reviews, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys, so thank you so, so much for watching. And as usual, special thanks to those of you who helped me out over on the channel memberships right here and on Patreon, including Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, or G59061, 10 Soldier YT, and Van Fawn.